But hey folks, how's this, how's this for a change of scenery? We're mixing it up. Uh, you know how I constantly tell you to change and enjoy the moment. So here I am, I'm, uh, I'm listening to my own stuff that I spew at you each week. We're eating my own cooking, as, uh, as Warren Buffett often says. So I decided to pull over a nice place here in New Jersey with nice scenery behind me and say, let's, let's take the, uh, the video blog to the outside. I'm on my way home from my office and thought this would be a nice peaceful setting because I want to talk to you a little bit about time and my meeting last night. Last night I had the honor and the privilege to meet the famous author uh, Mitch Album. Do you remember who he is? He wrote the book uh, Tuesdays with Mari. Remember that? Uh, it was a movie also. Um, the Five People You Meet in Heaven and a few other books in between but his latest book Timekeeper. Now you know how I'm constantly talking about time. It's the most precious com commodity that you can spend. So. It was, it was a nice meeting, a lecture, a Q&A. Actually, Michael Smirconish, WPHT, 12, 10 a.m., a big talker, a radio, syndicated radio station across the country, uh, ha does this thing called the Book Club. And it was an opportunity in a, in a really intimate setting to, to meet with him, uh, to listen to him speak, and questions, answers, and about his motivations for his books. And, and here is my message to you. What I found... And by the way, he's quite gregarious, very funny, originally from the New Jersey, Philadelphia area, but now he lives in Detroit, uh, and he's still a sports writer out there because after he became famous from the Tuesdays with Maury book, he said, you know, they're the first people that hired me as a sports writer, and I'm sticking with them. So there's a good life tip right there. Anyway, what I found was, because people are, he spoke for, for about 40 minutes, and then they opened it up to questions and answers. And what he talked about in each one of the stories, and you re remember this, about his old college professor that he found who was, who was home alone, couldn't pay his bills, was dying, and he would go back and he would keep a journal as to what this, the wisdom that his old professor gave him turned into a book like Life Tips, and then the five people that you meet in heaven, the book about uh, this man who dies and, you know, goes to heaven, doesn't even realize that he touched all these people all his life, never thought that his life mattered, and now the timekeeper about what's so important about our time. What I found was that, and he admitted, he said, you know, I am far from perfect. People think that I'm this special guy. All these books were written for me. They all have to do with the relationship with my, my wife and I, my mom, uh, my nieces and nephews, and the experiences that, that I've been having in my life. He said, so these books helped me. I thought that was interesting. But what really struck me was the basis, the basic premise of this book, The Timekeeper, is it's a fable about father time and about how so many of us are doing so many things to try to save time. Some of us are doing things to, and a lot of us, to waste time. And there are actually some of us who just have given up on time completely and a lot in between. So the story is about father time as a young boy and how he measures time and then God punishes him for trying to measure time because time is a gift that they say that God gives us. So he is punished to eternity unless he can help a couple people out on earth. And as it turns out, the whole premise and the basis of the book is this, is that the reason why God limits our time, because if we didn't have time, if we could live a million years or into infinity, he said you could have all these lifetimes. You could do good things and bad things and it wouldn't matter. But the reason why God limits our time is because it's so precious and we should start to appreciate it. Think about that. Well, what had happened at the end, he had a question and answer. And the very last, last question that he took, the gentleman next to me stood up and asked the question. And he stands up and it turns out to be, he said, hi, I'm, my, you know, my name is so-and-so, and everybody's asking him questions about what's your next book, and what motivates you to do this. This kid stands up, I didn't even realize it was a kid, he's 16, he says, hi, and I realize he's with his mom. And most of the people there are, uh, let's just say, middle-aged, like yours truly, and maybe older. He said, I'm 16 years old, I love all your books, I really want to become a writer, is there any advice you can give me? And he said, look, first let me give you the standard stuff, and that's surround yourself with writers, surround yourself with good books. He goes, but most importantly, thank God every day that you're in this country. Thank God for the fact that you 
have those around you who love you and cherish that. And he got into this whole conversation about the fact that he and his wife have started this foundation in Haiti. And he's talking about the fact that what we do is we go there once a month and we've set up this, this organization where we choose kids to take in almost, not, not to adopt, but take into the center to feed them, clothe them, find families for them because he said it is so bad there that people, they just die every day. He says there's, there's no electricity. People live in little tin corrugated houses with a tarp and you'll see a six-year-old playing in muddy water and then there's a, a pig running around right there. He said there's no plumbing, there's no electricity in most places and it's, and, and these people just come to him, they want to give away their kids who are, you'll have a six-year-old is half his size because he's malnutrition. And he just said the point of that is, is that it's waking me up to the fact that am I using my time rightly? And he told this 16-year-old boy, he said, be grateful that you are where you are and cherish all of your moments. And remember what my book said, that the reason why your time is limited here, you could be 16 years old, you could be 20 years old and pass away, but you might have lived a life better than a 100-year-old person who never really use their their life so use your time wisely but surround yourself with the people that you love the things that you love to do write books and everything else will fall into place because often we spend our time um, worrying about things that we can't control feeling sorry for ourselves where we really don't have any real problems instead we should go out and self-actualize and become the best that we know that we can be with, with, with what God's put inside of us. So there, so spend your time wisely and make it a great day because it's the only one you've got. And enjoy the view.